<laughs> okay. Hello and welcome to Anatomy of Marriage, Marriage Mornings. I'm your host, Melanie Studley. Good morning. My name is Seth Studley. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and today is day 93 of our Sexy Saturday. No, of our Infinity Day Marriage Morning Challenge. Today is Sexy today Saturday. Today is Sexy Saturday, that's and right. And the topic for today is keep the play in foreplay. And we'll talk about what that means in a minute. But before we do that, we want to welcome you. If you're new, hello, welcome. You can check out over 100 episodes that are different than Marriage Mornings. They're longer format. Some are highly produced. They have music. They've got multiple interviews in them. So go check those out. Tons of topics to talk about. Yeah. All that jazz. You'll grow your brain. Today's show is brought to you by <laughs> Audible Tribe com forward slash anatomy of marriage go to audibletrial.com forward slash anatomy of marriage to get your free book which we, is we audible. live we live on books so you guys um, check it out and we do four things every marriage morning mm -hmm. we do a prayer past gratitude future hope and goals that's right we encourage you to do these four things <clears throat> with us so do your prayer past gratitude future hope and goals with your partner talk about them it's super helpful and an easy fun way to start out your day connecting right. do you want to pray sure Thank you, God, Creator, for your blessings. Thank you for this sunny day. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to hang out with tons of friends, to learn and grow with them. Thank you for this community. I pray that moving goes swell today and things work out. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. And right. I pray our house sells for a lot more than we're asking. Amen. <laughs> I do too. Um, but, uh, past, grat <laughs> prayer, past gratitude. Um, I didn't think of one today. I didn't either. I'm thankful that you are, like, when we move, you're like, go get it, hard worker. It's always, an, I like anything that's an adventure with you. I wrote that down yeah. yesterday that I like adventuring with you. I actually wrote that in the Ultimate Intimacy app. Really? Tests thing. But like I said, you're my ride or die lady. So that's right. we, we do it. That's right. Yeah. Uh, future hope, let's just blast through these. Future, future hope, hope that today goes well. Our goal is that today goes well. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff to do. We're Moving. going to Ikea. Well, we got to so buy a bed. So, all right. Yes, and goal. To work with you today. Yes. Thank um, you. Amen. <laughs> so the topic today is uh, keep the play in foreplay. And I wanted to think, I, I like this idea because, and again, this is coming from our own personal experience. Mm -hmm. I think we don't, we don't do foreplay very well. Right. We do sex fine, but we don't do foreplay well, which is important. And it's kind of a big deal that which we don't do it well. Which makes sex better or it would make it It would, better. yes, it would. And so the, the reason that I say to keep the play in foreplay is that I think in our relationship, I felt disappointed where you switch into this serious, like sex is serious. Right. And like if you're a lady out in the audience or a man, I guess, you can tell me if this is something you experience. Like, okay. like you, instead of kind of delighting when I'm happy and kind of like relating to me in a sexual way that way, like in the foreplay, if that yeah. makes sense, you tend to like want to be serious as I don't even know do you know what I mean yeah I know what you mean because there is an anxiety we're getting real here y'all. we are for real uh, there is an, an anxiety that I might mess up and put you out of the mood so I don't want to be it's definitely helpful to just get weird that's that, that would keep me in the mood for sure <laughs> just get awkward that'd be awesome <laughs> um okay so <laughs> Uh, I you you I lost Derailed my train you. of thought. Sorry. Yes, sorry for the <clears throat> non-professionalism, but I was I was getting real, and you know what? This goes back to yesterday. I was getting real, and you said something sarcastic. I'm trying to lighten the mood, bro. I know. So okay, uh, what was I saying? I really lost my brain right now. I'm sorry. That's okay. So okay, <clears throat> I there's there's an anxiety that it will like stop like something will happen or who knows what and you would be like oh no forget it so it's like you know I, the, the when I heard you talking I was thinking about the banquet table that Dr. Tina mm -hmm. talks about and Deb I know you've heard her talk about this too um, the the banquet like there's all kinds of foods and just delight in every food you're instead saying that, of like there's two okay, or three if people foods. haven't heard that they're talking about sex and intimacy being a connection and pleasure mm -hmm. and like a banquet where there's many things that you can eat within that sort of one meal, right? Not just like little Smokies or something. <laughs> little Smokies. <laughs> I used to love those when I was a kid. <laughs> that's inappropriate. We're talking about sex, and you say little Smoky. That's kind of funny. <laughs> Spits like the little rap weenies. <laughs> oh gosh, please. Okay. Anyway, um, it, it's it's difficult to see it as a banquet. Like, oh, we can play. We can do uh -huh. fun stuff. We can be silly. We can be serious. We can be passionate. We can be 
free. Like uh-huh. that's the whole banquet in my mind. And I think sometimes I'm j- I just view it as like, oh, there's there's two or three foods on there. Uh, we better we better you have like eat a... them before somebody else comes in and takes them away. Yeah. So like you see the whole banquet, but all you do is go to the like closest first food and say, well, I'll just eat all of that in case. Something happens and I can't have the rest. Sort of. So it's yeah. kind of like a... What do you think about it in that way? Like well, if it's, it's a banquet. What do you mean? What are your thoughts on that? Like I I, I think, oh yeah, just eat this and eat this and blah, 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 or else we go away. What do you think about it? Are you like, the whole banquet? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, I don't have a problem with like, uh, I don't know how to say this in a way that doesn't feel weird. You don't have a problem <laughs> like I do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, actually that wasn't what I was going to say. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I just don't have a problem being in that like state of mind. Like I feel like, yes, life's a banquet. Eat it all. Like be respectful, be kind, be loving, don't hurt anybody, but eat it all. Right. No big deal. Mm. And I think what I feel like is, um, it makes me think of like a like an animal that is afraid to, like a, like a dog trying to get a bone that it thinks it can't have, but right. it really, really wants it. That's what right. I think like, you're trying to like inch forward towards this treat and you're worried that I'm gonna be, that I'm gonna like shush you away. Yes. But really, and and this is again, you gotta hear me here, and I'm not trying to be mean, but yeah. it's like, you're don't like be stronger in right. that. If I go like this and shush you away for a second, go back after it. Mm-hmm. Well, who cares? Like mm-hmm. I'm not, and I want to be really clear. It is like minute things that set this like, well, you rejected me. Yeah. And it's not me being like, you dumb idiot, never do that. No, it's it, like it's totally not like that. minute things. And I think things. this goes back to we should read the comments. Someone <laughs> cried so they laughed so hard at the little smokies. <laughs> Yeah, guys, yeah. maybe you get that. I don't know. <laughs> okay. It was funny. Um, stay relaxed. Yes, Brad. Yes. Stay relaxed. It's okay. Um, I think that this conversation goes back again to what um, Dr. Corey Allen says how we do sex is how we do other stuff. The way we do and... sex is the way we do life. Don't misquote him so <laughs> egregiously. Sorry, sorry. I'm really good at was that having an idea stuff? but misquoting a, yeah. a lot of stuff. And. The conversation, if you guys missed yesterday's conversation, you should go back because I think it was so powerful about you you being sarcastic because that's the only way you know how to be and I wouldn't accept you <clears throat> otherwise, but being like loving and non-sarcastic is my baseline. So when you do it and try so hard, it's, uh-huh. uh, I, don't, I don't reward you enough for that. And so I, I think, yeah, I'm just having a bunch of thoughts here. So it's like, I bet if we start doing sex just really good, then that will be the trickle down effect to our other stuff. Not sex. We do sex fine. Okay. I think we have amazing sex. I think it's better than loads of people's sex. Just to be clear. (laughs) But it's the foreplay that's a problem. Right. And in order for, and so just to be very, I mean, Mm -hmm. we're people here. Just to be very clear, when foreplay isn't present, having amazing sex is a lot harder to do. Right. Because I essentially have to get my own body into the mood to have sex. Right. I have to like, well, like I say to myself, well, Seth's not going to do it. Dang it. Uh-huh. Every day a phone does a thing. Yeah. So like I say to myself, you're just not going to do it. So mm-hmm. I guess I have to like get my mind into that space mm-hmm. and do yoga and do all these things. So you're, you're, uh, like you're skirting your responsibilities and you're kind of shoving them off of your plate and putting right. them onto mine. Mm-hmm. And I've already got a lot of, it, it's going to sound unkind, I have kind of a lot of your emotional load of responsibilities. Mm-hmm. I already do sort of more emotional juggling and mm-hmm. I think that's kind of common for women yeah. in relationships. Yeah, I do more is. of the emotional <clears throat> juggling because you either didn't learn or it's not socially whatever so you don't kind of have that skill set you weren't taught to mm-hmm. do all those things. <clears throat> And so then you're just adding something else onto my plate, which makes you far less attractive. Right. So then when you don't do foreplay, it's like, well, do I even care enough? Mm-hmm. Like he doesn't even care enough to do that like for me, let alone for himself. It yeah. would benefit you. Right. Right. And I, and I don't want to make it sound like I think foreplay is only in your court to do. Right. I'm not saying that, uh, but I am saying that I think that that's a pattern that we've had. And I want, to, and the, back to the point of this whole episode, I want there to be play in foreplay. I want you to connect with me. Don't read the comments. I want you to connect with me like in a joyous way Mm -hmm. and delight in me. And delight is a fun word. It's not a serious word. I'm not delighting in this book. You delight, (laughs) you you have fun and you, you know, you're happy. So Deb says something. I talk to lots of people who get anxious, like what Seth describes. Thank you, Deb, for normalizing that. And that's, that's good to hear from another uh, MFT sex therapist. Um, and I think that I, uh, we, 
I know what we have to work on, I guess. I know what I have to work on. And the times that we have been like vulnerable together and like just everything lined up, I want to recreate those more. They just, you don't just fall off a log and they happen. Sometimes they do, but I'm, I'm thinking of like well, I mean, to at me, the retreat in Denver. And then yeah, other but that's times serious though. Here, that's, that's serious. serious. That's I don't want serious. it serious all the time. And okay. I, I appreciate what you just said and right. I, I accept that and think that's really good. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying play, like I am a joyful person. I want things to be light and fun and happy and adventurous. So how you describe that you need foreplay, I believe that I need an emotional, anxious, less foreplay. Well, you just said like the things at the retreat. Like you want that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, not not serious, but everything is just like normalized. And it's like, like I I talk about this on the podcast with Dr. Tina. I feel like I'm floating in water. You know, it's just like. I think you want to feel very safe and held. I think you want. I think not held safe. Held well, I mean like well, emotionally. I don't mean like held. I right. mean like emotionally. You know what I mean? I mean yeah, you can yeah. disagree with that, but yeah, I think when I look at what you're trying to tell me that you want for your for us, I think you're just tell. And it's not a bad way. Like you're telling mm. me what you would like when you're saying at the retreat. That's what foreplay looks like to you. Right. But it's almost the opposite for me. The retreat yeah. stuff is great, but that is one. Okay. Like, so I'm- Mm-hmm. Like one side of a diamond <clears throat> in one facet of a, like a bigger picture of what foreplay can be. Right. And what I'm saying is we have that more than anything. We mm-hmm. have that sort of serious spiritual almost kind of, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. I feel like we have more of that than mm-hmm. anything else. But what I'm saying, and again, I wrote this down the other day is that, no, don't read these things. Uh, what I, what we wrote down the other day was I feel the most loved and connected to you when we're traveling, when we are on an adventure, when mm-hmm. something is really exciting and fun and new and it's sensory and it's like, you know, it's like that kind of energy of uh, joy and excitement right. and delight and like foods and places and things to look at. And so that to me is like if we could figure out how to harness the energy of that mm-hmm. into foreplay somehow, that would be amazing. And not that we always have to travel, not, not, not that, yeah. but which we should do that though. It's a great option. Well, see, I know that you like that, and I think that because of <clears throat> historically your sarcastic and critical tone, I'm just I'm like, oh well, I don't I don't want to try those things anymore. Mm-hmm. Not not traveling and stuff because you'll you'll respond to it in a sarcastic or critical way, which is kind of your own kind of defense mechanism. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't want to bring out your default defense Mm -hmm. mechanism because it's just unpleasant it's not like it destroys me or anything Mm -hmm. it's just like uh, it's just unpleasant and unfortunately that is come into our I think foreplay and sex life Mm -hmm. does that make sense well and I think too because uh, often what I see is that the only type of foreplay that you try Mm -hmm. is serious right and so I get irritated, not, and I'm yeah. not saying that I should, and I, that's fine. Right. It's I'm just, just not saying, what you want, right? No, it's, it's like not. If, if you cooked, I want it to you feel know, like boiled chicken every single night. Yeah, like, well, and this is a weird that. analogy, but it makes me think of this. And this is gonna sound super out of left field, but the way that my dad is, my dad is like nothing can be fun, and he's a lovely guy, but you can. It's like nothing can be mm-hmm. light. You can't say a stupid joke. He gets all like, mm-hmm. he just wants to be self serious all right. the time, and maybe that. I mean, he does have brain damage. Maybe that's part of his funny brain went away. But maybe I have brain damage. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> uh, but it's it's. I think there's something really serious to be thinking there. Mm-hmm. Like, like I get so tired of having it only foreplay and sex look like what you want because you're right. not brave enough. And I'm not mm-hmm. blaming him here. I don't want it to come across right. that way. But you're too afraid mm-hmm. to uh, that I might throw like a spear at you right. of so whatever. So here's the thing: both of us have been conditioned. Right? This is a conditioning process. It didn't start out like that, right? So I've been conditioned to expect a critical or sarcastic response. Mm -hmm. You've been conditioned um, for me to be judgy or say something or hurt your feelings, Mm -hmm. right? So hold my mic right here. So as your critical and sarcasm goes down and I get used to that, my, I guess, adventureness and playfulness will, will go up. Does that make sense? And the less that I am oh, judgy, I see. Yeah. you see what I'm saying? And the less that I am judgy, so really, really, it's not like, Seth, you gotta do foreplay way better, you suck at it. It's not that. That is mm-hmm. absolutely not the answer. Yeah. And couples blame each other very often. Yeah. Like that a lot in sessions. Like it's definitely not just his deal. 
It is absolutely. I, I have it's, a it's, part to play in it. Right. So as your as you mm -hmm. individually grow and your sarcasm and criticalness goes down, what you want to see more mm, of, of of me in the relationship that will shine. Yeah. Well, right? and the thing. So that, and, the, and the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm if I say hurtful things and stupid things sometimes to you, which you do. I know. And, and I'm judgy. <laughs> that's that's not good. So I have to work on that. And then what I want to see more of you. It will grow. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, it reminds me of those like if you have a raft in the water and you put weights on it, mm -hmm. the thing's not going to float up higher with all the weights on it, right. right? And you're and what you're saying is, I could, yes, I would like to try to be more joyful and playful in foreplay, but your my weights are on there of criticism, sarcasm, right. negativity, and right. I'm literally. And not that I am holding you down, but there's a big factor to that. That my like own... I said, it's the the conditioning that has happened over the years. <clears throat> it's like I'm on I'm on home base or something, and you're saying, "Look, there's a huge field out there. Come on." I'm like, "But you put all these like literal hurdles and roadblocks in there, mm -hmm. so we have to. You have to. You have to clean the field. You have to move those, right? But so you I gotta know. run it. I will. I will. I will. I will first. Um, anyway. <laughs> I don't know if any of that made sense, but it was fun. I hope it made sense. It makes sense to me, and I think it really helps us out. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but I, I, we want to encourage you guys to have these conversations with your partners. Talk about foreplay in a way that is non... Like, not... You don't expect it to have sex right after you talk about it. That might be a great way to figure out your foreplay styles if you're having conflict there. and Because mm -hmm. I just know that for me, what is... <laughs> makes total sense. Good. Yay. Um, but for me... I feel like that foreplay is so important to having a really great sex life. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can have a great sex life without foreplay. It's just a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And why would you miss out on all of that part of the banquet? That's like the saying, banquet, right. like, eat all of the um, bagels, but don't eat dessert. No, eat all of it. Like, don't mm -hmm. ignore the dessert because <clears throat> there's, like, something in the way of it. Right. You know? So I w we wanted to just talk about that idea. And, um, and, and also, go get the Ultimate Intimacy app. They have... Um, foreplay stuff about foreplay they've got I mean all sorts of amazing resources within the app and it's free and then if you get the paid version there's like a sex game I've never done it so mm -hmm. we've we haven't tried that out oh, yet. but that's playing I guess yeah um, but so yes thank you for joining us today we have got so much to do mm -hmm. we're gonna run we're gonna move we're gonna do all these things that's right we um, have an open house today yeah so if you live in Maple Valley yeah I know come by our house it's for sale <laughs> but uh, also, please rate and review the podcast on iTunes if you're enjoying these things. And if you find them helpful, please, please, please share it with your friends. And also, go get a free Audible audiobook. That's so right. So if you want to learn about sexuality, you can get the book Come As You Are by Emily Nagoski. It is phenomenal. It's, it's really a, good. Let me just talk reads, about it for two let seconds. Let me talk about it. She <laughs> reads the about. actual narration. So right. the author is the voice actor and she's great. Um, it's obviously about sex. So mm -hmm. it's about note. sex. And from a guy's perspective, I learned a lot about female, not anatomy so much because I knew all that, but the process, the internal process, the emotional side of the sex. differences of our bodies and yeah. there, there's so much to learn in it. It's surprising how much that there is to learn. So go get Emily Nagoski's book, but go to audibletrial.com forward slash anatomy of marriage for that. Mm -hmm. Please take us up on that. It actually helps us if you do that. So we're yeah. being serious here. We want to help you by getting you a free audiobook, but you getting a free audiobook helps us out. That's right. So um yes. Let's see what Emily's else. new book Burnout is awesome too. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I forgot about that. And let's see. Thank you all. Made sense, and we need more of these talks. Normalizing sexual differences is super important. It's like personality. Being spontaneous difference. is a plus too. That's a good one. Yeah, good it one, is. Fred. All right. Let's Thank you so much. Okay. We will see you all tomorrow, and we'll be in a different location. Hopefully. We'll be so. in our apartment. If not, something has gone wrong. <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right. Love you guys. Later, bye. bye. All right. Oh. In this one. Finish. I Thank don't you for being transparent.